would be honoured if you would join us. Hello and a very warm welcome back to Film Stories with Simon Brew. I am Simon Brew, that's all really you need to know about me. I'm going to stay in the 1990s but I'm going to go right to the end of the 1990s, uh, to the summer of 1999. Um, I've noted and written several times in the past about how the summer of 1999 was a transformative one uh, in many ways for blockbuster cinema. You might remember this was the summer of Star Wars The Phantom Menace of Austin Powers which proved that uh, a big a, a sequel could make substantially more money um, than its predecessor but also it was the summer of two very different projects at Warner Brothers and here's the one that I'm going to zoom in on. Gunning this, brother running this, Buffalo soldier. Look, it's like I told you, any damsel that same distress, be out of. Yeah, all right, that's quite enough of that, I think. Wild Wild West then, from the summer of 1999, um, a film that Will Smith took on uh, rather than accepting the role of Neo, Neo in The Matrix. Now, these were two Warner Brothers big blockbuster uh, films coming out that summer, and the heads of Warner Brothers were far, they understood far more Wild Wild West, a star driven vehicle, Will Smith uh, direct, re reuniting with Barry Sonnenfeld, the director of the Men in Black films. Um, and I mean, it's pretty well known that they struggled to wrap their head around The Matrix, which was a far cheaper production when compared to Wild Wild West. Um, but it would be one that would have far greater ramifications for blockbuster cinema. Now, the genesis of, of the Wild Wild West movie uh, went back several years. I mean, it is based on a, a, a television series. And at one point, uh, Mel Gibson and, and director Richard Donner were developing uh, doing their own their own film version of it, but instead they opted to make the sorely underrated and underloved Maverick, which I really think is a terrific film, and I'll come back to it at some point. Um, but um, eventually, the, uh, the 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 Wild Wild West project moved forward. It attracted the interest of Will Smith, um, who has has got on record several times um, saying that that he regrets making the film, not just turning down the the role in the Matrix, but he regrets Wild Wild West. Um, to give you an idea in the build up of how tricky um, uh, things were, Robert Conrad, who's the star of the original television series refused to have anything at all to do with the movie, uh, the movie version, once he'd read the screenplay for it. Um, it was a hugely expensive film. It went through the usual, um, the usual conundrum: who's going, to, who, who's going to be in the cast? I think George Clooney was offered uh, the supporting role at one point, but it starts with. I mean, it landed Will Smith and Kevin Kline in the two lead roles, um, with Salma Hayek um, in in support. And this was a big, massive, hugely expensive, movie star driven physical production. There are bits of digital work in it, um, but the vast bulk of this was, was, was a very physical outdoors film. But also the story really that the stories here that I'm, I'm really looking to zero in on was this was what a couple of years after Batman and Robin and Speed 2 had been shot down by in advance by online movie leaks, reports of test screenings um, where the bad buzz on the movie was, was loud months before either of those films really, really hit, came close to hitting cinemas. With Wild Wild West, um, there was clearly a paranoia. Hollywood didn't really understand the internet at this stage, and the whole idea of having screenings where bad word leaks in advance um, was getting people to kind of shut up shop a little bit. And true to form, Wild Wild West um, was having the same problem um, in that in the weeks in the weeks leading up to the to the film's release, um, they would get they they were up against some really really negative word of mouth. And I found one story. Uh, which cropped up at Entertainment Weekly uh, magazine, which came out, I, I think it was a week before the actual release of the film, about um, one particular problem, for instance, with a test screening that Warner Brothers set up. I didn't know this, and 
they'd set up, they'd set up this early test screening so that they could get you know they could get the audience feedback that they needed but Warner Brothers apparently was so afraid of the of early buzz leaking out on the film that they told the audience they were going to see a screening of the matrix now it's important to contextualize this i think that in the months leading up to the matrix i think it's fair to say nobody really saw the matrix coming you know, the, the, the influence of the internet, of, of mass movie previews, etc., was nowhere near as prevalent now as uh, then as it was now. And so the, one of the joys of The Matrix was just what an outright surprise it was. I mean, it, 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 we use Game Changer quite a lot. Um, and, and, and it's tossed away as a cliche, really. But I think you can legitimately say that at The Matrix. So this audience were told they were going to be seeing The Matrix. Uh, and as a result, the cinema was full of sci-fi fans. Um, but actually, what, what what Warner Brothers were doing was, was sneaking on a screening of Wild Wild West to to get a, a flavour of what people thought. But as Barry Sonnenfeld <laughs> reported in in this Entertainment Weekly uh, piece, when it was revealed to the audience, to this test screening audience, what they were going to see, the audience booed. They booed. And as Sonnenfeld notes, have you ever heard of an audience booing over seeing a Will Smith comedy? You know, and, and sure, there's a snarky response to that. But contextually, he's absolutely right. Because at the end of the 1990s, this was Will Smith off the back of Independence Day, off the back of Men in Black. You know, he, one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. And the idea of seeing a Will Smith blockbuster early was very, very unlikely to, to, <laughs> to get a whole cinema just outright booing at people. And it got to the point where, um, you know, Sonnenfeld reported that the audience response to that screening was actually mostly positive, but it was too late. The word was out. And um, it, it was at the point where Sonnenfeld was was actively urging people um, to, to uh, you know, just, just hold these Internet reports of screenings with, with almost a degree of disdain. I mean, he's quoted as saying you can ruin a movie through anonymous reviews on the Internet. And he added, and don't think for a minute that the studios themselves aren't anonymously writing good reviews for their own movies and bad reviews for other movies. And he was, he was quoted as saying that. And he's just like, I mean, that goes to kind of the mind that, that, that's evolved since, you know, we took the, 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 the obvious the obvious touch point is the modern day fixation with, with fake news. Um, and there are stories in the past and I'll come to these uh, in the future. Uh, of you know a movie studio at, at the end of the 90s actively introduced a fake movie critic um, to, so that they could have post very very favourable poster quotes for their movies. Um, but again, we'll come back to it. That wraps up this part. Head straight over to the next video to continue the next chapter of this film story.